Delaware joins me tonight from Iowa. Senator, thank you for being there. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Poppy. Great to be on with you again. So today, the Iraqi parliament voted to end U.S. troop presence across Iraq. And in response, the president tweeted and threatened Iraq, a U.S. ally, with sanctions and threatened that those sanctions could, quote, make Iranian sanctions look somewhat tame. What is your response to that? Uh, well, Papa, I'm struck by the way in which uh, President Trump is conducting foreign policy uh, by blustery tweet uh, rather than by a clear strategy, uh, engaging our allies and explaining to the American people um, how he's going to make us safer. Uh, I'm very concerned by reports that uh, the United Kingdom wasn't briefed before this attack on General Soleimani. Uh, they've been our vital partner in the war against ISIS. Uh, and if we also now are losing uh, the support and partnership uh, of the Iraqi people, their parliament, their uh, prime minister and president, um, that I think puts even more at risk our presence in the region. This will create a vacuum that will be filled by Iran and by um, the Shiite militia who are supported by Iran and the country. In the end, this is not a good thing for the United States. Well, an American contractor, as you know, was, was killed by the regime on December the 27th, and that appears to be what the line was for this president, right? He didn't respond in this fashion yes. after the drone was taken down or after the Iranian attack on the Saudi oil fields, but, but this American contractor being killed was that line, it appears. Why not? take General Soleimani out. Why does that not make it? It sounds to me like, in your opinion, the world a safer place. Uh, well, let's be clear first that General Qasem Soleimani was a terrible person. Uh, no American should mourn his passing. He was uh, directly responsible for planning and carrying out uh, dozens of attacks that killed uh, hundreds of American uh, troops over many years, as well as thousands of civilians across mm -hmm. the region. Uh, he and the Quds Force, which he has led, um, have contributed to uh, violence and destabilization across the region. Uh, so I certainly don't mourn his death. Um, but it is a step that was not taken by the Bush administration, mm -hmm. the Obama administration, by our British allies um, over many opportunities over many years uh, because they, can, they were gravely concerned that it would greatly escalate uh, violence in the region and put at risk our partnership with the Iraqi uh, government. So um, I'm looking forward to what uh, the Senate deserves, which is a detailed classified mm -hmm. briefing on what justified mm -hmm. this dramatic escalatory step. Right. And I frankly think the president still owes the American people a clear strategy. And given that you haven't seen the intelligence yet, we haven't seen the intelligence, I would just say for our viewers, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs called the intelligence compelling, said it was a significant campaign of violence. It was planned and we would be, quote, culpably negligent if we did not take action. Mm. Now, you're in Iowa because you are supporting yeah. former Vice President Joe Biden's candidacy. He was asked today right. on the rope line by a reporter if he believes that President Trump used this attack on Soleimani as a distraction from impeachment. Listen to that exchange. Do you think that Donald Trump is using this Iran situation to distract from impeachment? I don't know, but it will have the effect of that. He said, I don't know, but it will have the effect of that. And I wonder what you, as a sitting senator on the Foreign Relations Committee, think. Do you believe that this strike now was an effort to distract from impeachment from the president, as some of your Democratic colleagues have at least suggested? Uh, well, I don't know that, Poppy, and I um, think that's something that all of us should be asking, is whether or not um, our president, who has on a number of occasions taken abrupt uh, ill-informed uh, foreign policy decisions uh, is making decisions that are really in the best interests of our armed forces, of the American people, of our security in the world, uh, or whether he's taken issue, uh, he's taken initiatives um, that, that really were ill-informed. Um, let me take us back for a, a moment. Um, he made an abrupt decision uh, to pull all American forces out of Syria um, in a way that abandoned our Kurdish allies uh, and that was strongly opposed uh, by a number of leaders in the career military. The first time he did that, uh, his former Secretary of Defense, Jim Mattis, a decorated four-star Marine Corps general, mm -hmm. resigned in protest. Uh, the second time he actually carried that out uh, without consulting with leaders in Congress or our closest allies. President Trump has shown a tendency uh, towards making abrupt, uh, ill-informed decisions that have put our security at risk and created vacuums in the region that have been filled by Russia or Iran. 
Um, so I am concerned that this action might well have been taken without it being well grounded uh, in a strategy or, or justified by intelligence. Uh, but given what you just quoted to me about the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, I'll look for some briefing on this this coming week. Yeah. Okay, finally, quickly before we go, 30 seconds left. Senate sure. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said today that he believes, quote, there's a decent chance that four Republicans will join us, and that is join his call to have these four witnesses called in a Senate trial and to agree on that before the trial begins. Do you know of four of your Republican colleagues in the Senate who are willing or have told you privately that they will vote yes for witnesses pre-trial? Poppy, I don't have the names of four senators I'd be willing to share with you tonight um, who have considered this and decided that they want to stand up for a fair trial, um, for the evidence to be presented in front of the Congress. Um, the Senate does have an historic obligation here, uh, and I hope uh, that my colleagues uh, will weigh the evidence here and weigh our role, our constitutional role, and communicate to Majority Leader McConnell that they will insist on um, the witnesses and the evidence that's required. What I saw in the House, in front of the House Intelligence Committee and the House Judiciary Committee, was President Trump stonewalling, uh, refusing to do what President Clinton and President Nixon did in their impeachment proceedings and direct their senior associates and cabinet officials uh, to respond to subpoenas and to testify under oath. If President Trump has a case to make, now is the time for him to make it. And Republicans, my colleagues in the Senate, who I'll rejoin tomorrow in Washington, I hope at least four of them will step forward and stand for our role in the constitutional order and stand for the historic role that the Senate has as this trial begins. I think none of us know where this thing is going to go this week. We'll be all over it. We appreciate your time. Have a safe flight back. We'll talk to you in Washington. Thank Senator you, Chris Coons, thank you very much, and we'll be right back. Okay, everyone.